Alright, this is not Gunslinger Girl. Listen, lady, put your phone down. Cancel all operations. Tell your friends to pull it. When Theodore Roosevelt said, talk softly and carry a big stick, he wasn't just instructing one on how to navigate Philadelphia or be the leading man of a potboiler on Wattpad. He was giving oft-ignored advice for foreign policy and all other occasions. Do not make any threats you can't back up with sufficient firepower. Do not write any checks you cannot cash. Any tactical action anime featuring girls with guns is treading into a minefield of my elevated expectations. So Lycoris Recoil, the new original anime from A1 Pictures, has done pretty well in heeding Teddy's advice. The marketing material has all been light and fluffy pixiv art of pretty girls with moderately detailed guns. The first episode comes right out of the gate with a goofy, dark comedy presentation of the proceedings as polite armed schoolgirls called Lycoris quietly eliminate terrorists without the public noticing. There's nothing to make you expect that this is a more dramatic, serious series, which is going to apply a lot of realism to its world or characters. Which is good, because for all its strengths, this show has no interest in that. Strength is the word when talking about the main character, Chisato. She's a blonde, genki badass who is so unbelievably good at what she does that she hardly seems to care anymore. She can be caught flat-footed by a man with an assault rifle at five paces and simply dodge all the bullets. It is too easy for her to kill people, so she uses less lethal ammunition. She is so perfect, in fact, that she doesn't even have a pulse. It really helps that her seiyu puts on a clinic with her voice performance and carries every speaking scene. <laughs> Being the loose cannon who gets results that she is, Chisato has left DSA, the main armed schoolgirls organization, to run an impossibly aesthetic little cafe called Lycoreco, where they serve desserts and coffee undertones. This is a place right out of those Instagram stories from your insufferable acquaintances who went to Japan. It contains one of those idealized bar patron communities that I'm not sure even exists. In between shooting folks and serving folks, she and Takina, the disgraced Lycoris assigned to her, do random odd jobs as well. It's all incredibly upbeat, cheerful, and aesthetic, with nary a cloud in the sky, even though these girls are packing heat at all hours. The best example of what this show is like is episode 5. The girls are asked to bodyguard this cute old man around town. Chisato is quite enthusiastic to be a tour guide of this beautiful Japanese city. Which is where this series really shows its roots in that genre of pixiv, which is itself the drawn corollary of lifestyle influencers. But then the guy requests that she kill the assassin who killed his entire family and is now coming after him. A well-justified revengeance, if there ever was one. It really gives you an opportunity to see what Chisato cares about and what she will do when presented with a moral dilemma. Without spoiling, it is quickly revealed that absolutely nothing about the situation is as it appeared, and her decision ends up being the correct one by complete accident. There was the hint that this show might be morally grey or less than flattering for its protagonists, but it contrives to completely neutralize that. This is not an isolated incident. When a main cast member is revealed to be partially responsible for a large number of brutal deaths, it's basically just shrugged off because none of the victims were named characters, I guess. Lyco Reco expects you to shrug a lot of things off. What kind of insane fault lines does this society have that leads to large groups of well-armed terrorists and mercenaries being a regular phenomenon? There's no evidence that they are cultists, communists, or crusaders. As of the start of the series, the schoolgirl surveillance state is just as much of a surprise to the antagonist as it is to everyone else, and no other motivations are stated. Yet there is an inexhaustible supply of spirited mooks to gun down. The villain asks the populace, so if you're happy, you don't care if the world is so unnatural and unbalanced? To which the answer is like, yes. Society is by definition unnatural. The question at the forefront of every unrest or revolution is why people are unhappy with it, and those are usually bread and butter issues. Unlike certain other tactical action series I could mention, I assure you at no point will Lycoris Recoil take any time to explain that how these people have complex ethno-regionalist motivations dating back centuries, or how they're even real characters worth empathizing with. And that's okay, because there was nothing about this show that should have actually set you up to expect all of that. 
As far as I can tell, this series was inspired by that art you'll see on r slash Gunname. Tactical violence and firearms as just a vague signifier for elite cool people doing cool things, derived largely from video games and movies starring them throughout the ages, as opposed to any real armed conflict. Nothing about this is real or serious. The plot of the chorus recoil you are meant to take seriously isn't bad. It's a classic chestnut about whether people with power and talent are obligated to do something for society, and what form that is meant to take, framed as a spat between Chisato's two dads over her path through life. For all of the script's unwillingness to really challenge her on that front, it is a compelling question whether her refusal to kill for the cause is failing all that people in society have invested in her, for whatever that's worth. And beyond that, this show is just pleasant to watch moment to moment. A1 Pictures can actually make a pretty consistently good-looking show this decade. The character and background art is all quality in that sterile digital art kind of way, and the action scenes, while absurd, are still dramatic and fun. There is enough definition to the animation that you can actually tell what's going on when the characters do ludicrous gun fu or use their superpowers. The twisting intrigues of the plot, while predictable, are at least interesting enough to keep me from switching to another tab. This show is like a souffle that the Lyco Reco Cafe would sell. It's pleasant looking, has genuine sweetness and flavor, fills the dish, but mostly consists of hot air. Fortunately, I didn't come in expecting anything more. A1 Pictures talked the talk that suited the size of stick they could swing, so overall, my impression of Lycoris Recoil is positive, even if it reminds me, unintentionally, of far more interesting stories. Have a good one. Yeah.